has life got you down, guys? Because no one would blame you if it does, right? We've had a hell of a year, year and a half, whatever it's been now, since 2020, as we're halfway through 2021 or more. And guys, it's been rough on everybody, and I get it, and you can do something about it, because you've already made it this far, guys, because you're resilient. Human beings are resilient, but guys... Let me help you become unbreakable. Let me help you develop seven skills you need to be resilient no matter what you're facing. Let's get into it. Be better tomorrow because of what you do today. Guys, welcome to the Fallible Man Podcast. My name is Brent and I am your host. This is a place for everything man, husband, and father. Guys, we provide content to help men become the men they want to be, to help them reach their fullest potential because everybody should grow to become what they were meant to be. You have so much potential and possibility, guys, and we just want to see you get there. And guys, it is harder than ever to do so right now, right? The last year and a half has been rough. We can be honest here. Totally rough. I get it. Man, I don't know your individual situation, but I have no doubt that it has been a rough year and a half for you with that sh they shall not be named because you know i don't want them to censor my podcast but guys i did this as a live stream a while back and i wanted to do it on the podcast in case you missed the live stream that and the audio on the live stream was so bad i just felt like i needed to do it again but guys i want you to become unbreakable i want you to become resilient to the point where no matter what comes your way you can just keep on going. And so that is what we're going to work on. We're going to stop wasting time. We're going to get right into it with point number one. You have to understand what resilience is. Resilience doesn't mean that things don't hurt. Resilience is not being immune from things. It is not being detached and emotionless. It is not being stoic. Okay. Resilience is the ability to move forward or to grow forward through every part of life's process. There's struggle in life. Resilience is about how you react to struggle and grow forward through it, guys. Think of it like this. A river doesn't get mad at something in its path. It just slowly adapts and it keeps flowing and it keeps going. And sometimes it takes the time to build up and overflow whatever the obstacle is. Other times, it goes around it. It reroutes and just finds a new direction to go to get to the same place. Sometimes you got to take that detour, right? Sometimes it goes under. Sometimes, over centuries, it just wears down its opposition. That is resilience at its finest, guys. You need to understand that resilience adapts and grows through the situation. So you have to understand resilience to understand how to be resilient. Number two, you need to develop your emotional regulation skills. Now, I'm not talking about stoicism directly, okay? I think stoicism has some fine points to it. If you've been on the podcast before, you probably heard me mention it before. There are some, I think, valuable teachings in stoicism. Is it the end all and say all? Probably not. But one of the things it does focus on is emotional regulation. Let me help you in regulating those emotions. I don't want you to stop having emotion. I want you to regulate them so you have control. That's all. So the first thing you need to do is reframe the situation. Now, quite a while back, I had uh, John on the show and John the corporate action hero shared with us that the first trick to fighting that fight or flight response. Okay. He's a stunt man or he used to be a stunt man. Now he trains them. And that fight or flight response is natural guys. And so when you're standing on top of a building, no matter how many times you've done it about to jump off a multi-story building onto an airbag, there is a moment where you just go, what am I doing here? 
that's your emotional brain telling you uh, this is probably not a good idea and your reasonable brain telling you this is a really stupid idea the first thing you need to do is reframe the situation and this is what john shared with me stopping and taking a couple deep breaths i'm talking in through the nose out through the mouth not like short shallow crappy breaths like deep deep breaths i just had a trainer on the other day Ari told us all about the fact that most people breathe shallow and the most healthy thing they can do is start taking deep breaths well guess what taking that deep full breath take three or four of them that's why anger management coaches and psychiatrists tell you to take a couple deep breaths that arrests your emotional response that gives your brain a chance to reframe it and take the emotion out of it because emotion is a burst of chemicals. So take a few deep breaths before you react to something. Develop that emotional regulation. It will help. Now, another part of that is you have to allow for negative emotions. Anger happens, guys. I, you know, you're not on camera with me, so I can't say raise your hand if you've never been angry. But you know who you are. So listen to me. Play my little game. Raise your hand if you've never been angry. Congratulations to the majority of you. You tell the truth and all the rest of you liars need to work on it. Just kidding. I'm, I'm just messing with you guys. Everybody gets angry, guys. That's a negative emotion. It's not wrong. It's just a negative emotion. It impacts you negatively. If you've been sad, that's a negative emotion. It's not bad. There's a time to be sad. Ooh, that, that sounds horrible. Say that multiple times fast, right? And teach my kids that. It's not sad, bad to be sad. It's not bad to be... Oh, yeah, that's horrible. Sorry. I won't do that to you anymore. Guys, negative emotions are going to happen. They're part of life. And so accept that they're going to happen. Take that deep breath. Give yourself a chance to reframe that emotion and reframe the situation. And it will be amazing what you can do. Also, you know what? Give yourself some space to do something you enjoy in times of trouble. Increase your positive emotions by giving yourself a chance to do something good in a difficult time, to do something you enjoy in a difficult time, you increase positive emotions to not let those negative emotions overwhelm you. My friend and I, Dave, call him man OCR Dave, right? We get on our motorcycles and ride. That's one of the positive things we do that we enjoy. Even when we're busy, sometimes getting on the motorcycle for five minutes, 10 minutes, helps us gain perspective because we enjoy that. It brings up the positive emotions, which lets us get a hold of and understand the negative emotions we're experiencing as well, guys. So number two is develop your emotional regulation skills. You understand what resilience is now. Now we need to develop those emotional regulation skills. Number three is important. You need to take responsibility you've ever been on this podcast, you more than likely heard about me, heard me talk about Jocko Willink's book, Extreme Ownership. Guys, I'll have a link for it. It is probably one of the most important books you will ever read. I swear to God, I shouldn't swear to God, that's bad. But I swear, guys, Scouts Honor, whatever you, whatever you guys do, I, I don't know, I wasn't a Boy Scout. It is one of the most important books you can read as far as I'm concerned. There's a link for it on my website. There will be a link for it in the show notes and the description, guys. Seriously, it is one of the most important books you could ever possibly read. We are at a time where personal responsibility is out the door. We blame everybody. And I'm telling you, take responsibility. Own your situation regardless of whether it's your fault. I don't care if your boss jumped down your throat. I don't care if your coworker screwed you over. I don't care if your spouse did you dirty. 
or your friend betrayed you, own the situation regardless of whether it's your fault. The first thing you do, need to do to own that situation is to look at the situation, look at your role in it, and look at for what you could have done differently to affect that situation. There's a possibility there's nothing you could have done to change it. And there's also a real possibility there's something you could have done to change it. Guys, own it, period. Your fault or not, own it, own it, own it. It's yours. Owning the situation gives you power. It does nothing but give you power over the situation. So own it like hardcore, guys. In taking responsibility, give yourself some forgiveness and grace if it is your issue. If you screwed up, if you blew it, if you made a bad choice, if you could have handled the situation better, if you could have worked with that boss better, if you could have worked with the coworker better, if you could have done right by your spouse, give yourself some forgiveness and some grace. You are not perfect. You make mistakes. The only way this is a failure is if you fail to learn from the situation, which I know you're not going to do because, hey, you're on the fallible man. We're all about owning our situation and owning our shit. So give yourself some forgiveness and grace. And ow, here's the hard part. If it is somebody else entirely, because that's possible, practice some, for, some forgiveness and grace for them as well. Don't just forgive yourself. If somebody else totally did you dirty, guys, practice some forgiveness and some grace because you are doing nothing but poisoning yourself. You're hurting yourself being angry and pissed off at them. Being angry and pissed off at somebody else has never, ever, ever in history done anything positive for anybody. Only ever ends in making the situation worse. And only makes the situation worse for you. They don't care if you're pissed off at them. You're only hurting yourself by holding that anger and holding that grudge. Forgive them. Give them grace. Move on. I'm telling you, it will change your life. Because now you own that situation. You are in control. You have power to do something about it. And you don't if you don't own it. So own the situation. Take responsibility whether it's your fault or not. Number four, guys. Build community. Okay? The old lone wolf adage is a bunch of crap. It's a cool movie idea. But it is a bunch of crap. Build a community. I'm a Game of Thrones fan. Sorry if that bothers you. But one of the lines they said at one point about the Starks, whose house sigil is a wolf, is when winter comes, the wolf that's alone dies, but the pack survives. Guys, it's true. It is absolutely true. You cannot go this world alone. You need friends. You need family. You need community. And I get it. Not everybody has family. Not everybody has good friends. Not everybody has a community. But generally you have one of those. If you don't, build a community. Build your own. Join somebody else's. There are a thousand and one Facebook groups. It is unreal how many there are. Join a Facebook group, guys. Join a church. I know, like old school, right? Pre, pre, modern era, pre Facebook, pre MySpace. <gasps> Join a community group, man. Whether it's the Boy Scouts, if you're younger, or the Girl Scouts, or and all that craziness now. Whether it's a church whether it's the Lions Club or what other, the Moose or gosh, there's a lot of them now. If you're a vet, hit the VFW guys. 
find a community to be a part of. Either join one or build one. There's a community. There's Order of Man. They have a Facebook group. Go on my website, thefallibleman.com, www.thefallibleman.com. Join our community as a man. We have a forum, and we are growing the community section. We're working on trying to build up more and more for you guys. There is no cost to you. I don't charge for any of that. Join the community. Join the discussion. Hey, reach out to me on social media because I'm everywhere. And talk to me and tell me what you're looking for in your community. Let's build something together, all right? Let's build a community because you can't go it on your own. It's not possible. Now, guys, at this critical juncture, we're going to pause and go to our show sponsor. Today's guest sponsor is Stephen Crane. If you've been on the podcast before, you might have caught our podcast episode with author Stephen Crane. If you didn't, be sure and go back and check out that episode. Stephen Crane wrote the book. I can appreciate that. It's a great book, guys. I had a great conversation with Stephen. You should go back to that podcast if you missed it. Stephen wrote a book called I Can Appreciate That after his teenage son kind of challenged him for his perspective and outlook on life. It's a series of nine or ten basic essays that all revolve around the same theme because he spent a year just nurturing gratitude. Well, one of the stories in the book specifically is about a young man that Stephen knew and got to be a part of his life who passed away from cancer, a very young man. This month is Cancer Awareness Month, guys. September is Cancer Awareness Month. If you've had somebody in your life affected by cancer, you may have known that. If not, hey, it's Cancer Awareness Month. And this month, Stephen is donating 100% of the proceeds from his book to fight cancer and to fund cancer research. So guys, there's going to be a link in the description in the show notes for the Amazon posting of the book, I Can Appreciate That, by author Stephen Crane. And guys, I want you to benefit from this book. Okay, it's a really great book. Or I wouldn't recommend it. Not only can you benefit from reading this book, because everybody I've talked to, guys, as a podcaster, I've talked to a lot of people. Everybody will tell you that living life with gratitude is valuable for your life. It does make you more resistant if we want to get back on topic. This book is a great book that will help you focus on living a life of gratitude. And at the same time, you can help fight cancer, guys. Hashtag I can appreciate that. Hashtag F cancer. Get your copy of I can appreciate that on Amazon and help fight cancer. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Thank you for considering it. And thank you for helping to fight a real monster in the world because cancer is nasty. Hashtag I can appreciate that. Back to our show. And today we're talking about being resilient. How to become unbreakable. We've talked about becoming, understanding what resilience is, developing emotional regulation. We talked about taking responsibility and building community. And if you missed that part of the episode, go back and listen from the beginning. It's really important. Now we're going to talk about point number five, and that is strengthen your relationship with yourself. Guys, if you listened to the podcast two weeks ago, before this episode, I had Michael on Broken On last week, and the week before that, we talked about being selfish. We weren't really talking about being selfish, guys. We are talking about taking the time to become, to tend to your self-care, to take care of yourself, to build yourself up. And guys, that's the first part of strengthening your relationship with yourself. You have to take time to take care of yourself. You have to take time to build yourself up. You cannot, you're a battery, okay? You cannot give and give and give and give and give and never run out of juice. It doesn't work like that. Take time to build yourself up with some self-care. Stop talking negatively about yourself, guys. It starts in your head. What happens in your head 
goes to your mouth and then comes out of your, in your heart, guys. I'm, I'm not a big person in manifestation or journaling. I think those are fine things. Well, journaling is a fine thing. I don't believe in manifestation. But how you think about yourself, how you talk to yourself in your head. Guys, if somebody else talked about you like that, you punch them in the face. Seriously, stop that crap. Stop talking to yourself in a way that you would punch somebody else for. There's no call for it. And if you think about it, it sits on your heart, eventually comes out of your mouth. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop the negative conversation about yourself. Feed yourself good things. Books, conversation, podcast. You know, there are actually educational YouTube videos. If you're watching this on YouTube, this is one of them. Spend time thinking. If you're watching crap, watch things like National Geographic that build your knowledge, guys. Do things that feed yourself mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically. Strengthen that relationship with yourself if you want to be resilient. Because if you don't got you, nobody's got you. It's just a fact. Guys, if you're getting something out of this so far, or you're still with me at this point, be sure and hit that like button. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Good Beats, or anywhere else you're listening to us. Share us with your friends. Hit the subscribe button. It really helps us out. Let's keep rolling. Guys, this is an easy one. Exercise. Get exercise. Get exercise. Get exercise. Feed yourself nutritional food. Oh my goodness. I can hammer this one in the ground all day, guys. Science has proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that exercise has no end to the emotional, mental well-being, besides the physical well-being that comes with it. Science has proven that exercise has no end to how it helps you mentally and emotionally, besides the physical. We were talking about self-care just a second ago. Self-care. Eat nutritious food. You're not a child anymore. You know not to eat McDonald's. You know to stop eating out of the gas station. All my brothers work in construction. Guys, I know. I took my daughter fishing yesterday. I stopped at the gas station. I got two Crispitos and a can of coffee. Yep. I still do it. I've been out of construction for a decade now. I still do it. And I know better. I know better. I can tell you some of the best diet and nutrition tips you can find. But I know better and I still do it, guys. So... Stop eating the crap. You're not a child anymore. Drink water, eat healthy, get some exercise. Three 10 minute walks, seven days a week will change your life, I swear to you. It is that simple. Number seven, guys challenge yourself. Set goals. Set goals both mentally and physically. If you watch the channel much, you know I like to do obstacle course ra- racing. My good friend Dave, Common Man OCR, at Common Man OCR, is a guest on the show and a regular. Guys, we love obstacle course racing, and I'm not saying you got to do it. But I can tell you, we started doing it because we're two desk jockeys who sit behind a computer screen all day. We knew we were missing the physical challenge in our life. And it left us empty emotionally, mentally, and physically. So we set out a physical challenge for ourselves and we've been addicted to it ever since. Not like addicted, I can't quit, bad addiction, but like we love it. We love doing the events. We love going to them. We love being a part of them. Set physical challenges. You don't have to do a OCR. Maybe your physical challenge. I just did a uh, push-up challenge earlier this year on Facebook. 2,200 foot push-ups in uh, a month, right? For some of you guys, that's nothing. For some of us, that's huge. Oh my goodness, it was horrible. My shoulders hated me. Set a physical challenge. Set a mental challenge. Challenge yourself. Set those goals. Physical, mental, emotional. Live according to the values you believe in. Do hard things. I seriously mean it. 
hard things, guys. Do really hard things. You grow. You get stronger. You get tougher. It's an entire chapter in Congressman Dan Crenshaw's book, Fortitude. I'll put a link in the description, guys. It was a great book. Do hard things. Doing hard things builds you up mentally, physically, emotionally. It strengthens your resilience. Guys, as we land this plane, I want you to collectively commit to growing your resilience. Becoming more resilient will improve every aspect of your life. It will make your life easier. It will make you stronger. It will make you more capable. It's a skill. It's a learnable skill. and You better get the practice in if you want to become resilient. Guys, I care so much about this one that I want you to go to HTTPS colon whack whack. Sorry, that's the slashes in nerd speak. The fallible man dot ck dot page. Yes, it's a landing page. I know it's got a weird suffix. I swear to you guys, I'm not trying to poison your computer. I would never do that. I'm an IT guy. I know exactly how bad that is. I would never do that to you. If you're watching on YouTube, it's on the screen, guys. It's in the show notes below if you're listening to the podcast. The fallible man dot ck dot page. Put in your email. You'll get a free copy of my email of my ebook when you confirm it. You put in an email. I don't care if it's your real email. I don't care if it's your main email. Put in an email. It's going to send you an email. You're going to click confirm and immediately it's going to give you a downloadable PDF, guys. It's 70 pages. Download your PDF. If you want to unsubscribe as soon as you download it, you can. You're off my mailing list. I don't care. Download Become Unbreakable, Seven Skills for Developing Resilience in an Ever-Changing World. It is taking this topic that we talked about and just barely touched on in this podcast to a whole nother level, guys. It's yours, free. I don't want anything for it. Seriously, you can unsubscribe as soon as you get the email and the PDF. Confirm the email. Download the PDF, unsubscribe. I will never bother you again. I just want you guys to have it because I care about you and I want you to be more resilient because I know that life has been difficult for the last year and a half. Maybe for some of you longer than that. Guys, I just want to give you something because I care. I know it's, it sounds weird. I swear there's no catch. I wouldn't do that to you because I want you to come back and listen again. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for taking the time to be a part of this. I am the Fallible Man, and until next time, be better tomorrow because of what you do today. We'll see you in the future. This has been the Fallible Man Podcast, your home for everything man, husband, and father. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a show. Head over to www.thefallibleman.com for more content and get your own Fallible Man gear.